off my right, is research which is profoundly an understatement. Lining of the gums may be a sign you need more vitamin C in your diet. In this particular research, they reviewed clinical studies, in particular 15 involving six countries, or should say over six countries, involving 1,140 participants. And they discovered some extremely curious correlations. In particular, bleeding gums and retinal bleeding, hemorrhages, strokes, so on and so forth. Although the outcome of this particular review is basically looking at reversing bleeding of the gums through the intake of vitamin C. Now, without further ado, to our time-managed friends out there, let's get right to the crux of that particular outcome of the reviews. And then for those still here, we'll go into the detail, a little more depth of the research or some interesting discoveries as well. So keep in mind as follows. Consequently, researcher whose name I can't pronounce, so I'm trying to be respectful, does recommend people attempt to keep an eye on their vitamin C intake through incorporation of non-processed foods such as kale, peppers, or kiwis into your diet. And, you, and if you can't find palatable foods rich in vitamin C, to consider a supplement of about 100 to 200 milligrams a day. Now that number is what the researchers correlate with potential reversing of the bleeding of the gums. And by doing that, potentially offsetting the susceptibility to retinal bleeding, strokes, hemorrhages, and so on and so forth. Even though that appears to be a very low bar, one third of the United States population doesn't even make the 60 milligram per day bar. So there are some improvements that need to be made. But let's get right into the research as follows. Bleeding gums may be a sign you need more vitamin C in your diet. Bleeding the gums on gentle probing or gingival or gingival. Bleeding tendency also, and also bleeding in the eye or retinal hemorrhaging were associated with low vitamin C levels in the bloodstream. Current advice from the American Dental Association tells you that if your gums bleed, make sure you are brushing and flossing twice a day because it can be a sign of gingivitis. An early stage of periodontal disease and not might be true. So if you're concerned, see your dentist. However, a new University of Washington study suggests that you should also check your vitamin C or your intake of vitamin C. Proceed a little bit more in depth into the study. Researcher, which I'll just call researcher until I get the, pro the correct pronunciation. Again, being respectful. Published in February 1st in Nutrition Reviews, analyzed published studies of 15 clinical trials in six countries involving 1,140 predominantly healthy participants and data from 8,210 U.S. residents surveyed in the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's Health and Nutrition Examination survey. The results showed that bleeding of the gums on gentle probing or gingival, bleeding, gingival, bleeding, tendency, and also bleeding the eye or retinal hemorrhaging were associated with low vitamin C levels in the bloodstream. And the researcher found that increasing the daily intake of vitamin C in those people with low vitamin C plasma levels helped to reverse these bleeding issues. What an incredible, 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 eloquent, simple dietary way of basically helping improve these not so fun conditions. Now, if you think about it, the vitamin C levels in one third of your population are that low, then if you're going to be developing any effective pandemic mitigation strategy per se, then you can't do it effectively without addressing the nutritional issues. That's my rant on that. A potential relevance, says researcher, who is also an adjunct professor of epidemiology in the UW School of Public Health, both a gum bleeding tendency and retinal bleeding could be a sign of general trouble in one's microvascular system of a microvascular bleeding tendency in the brain, heart and kidneys the amount again we're going to reiterate consequently researcher does recommend people attempt to keep an eye on their vitamin c intake through incorporation of non-processed foods such as kale peppers or kiwis into your diet and if you can't find powerful foods rich in vitamin c to consider a supplement of about 100 to 200 milligrams a day deja vu further into the research the association between gum bleeding and vitamin C levels was recognized more than 30 years ago. This gives a wonderful backstory. In fact, two studies co-authored by the former dean of the UW School of Dentistry, Paul Robertson, published in 1986 and 1991, identified gum bleeding as a biological marker for vitamin C 
levels. However, this connection somehow became lost in dental conversations around bleeding gums. There was a time in the past when gingival or gingival bleeding was more generally considered to be a potential marker for a lack of vitamin C. But over time, that has been drowned out or marginalized by his overattention to treating the symptoms of bleeding with brushing or flossing rather than treating the cause. Their words, not mine. Good words, though. The researchers' literature review also determined that retinal hemorrhaging and cerebral strokes are associated with increased gingival or gingival bleeding tendency and that vitamin C supplementation reverses the retinal bleeding associated with low vitamin C plasma levels. So that's a wonderful uh, outcome as well to the research as follows. Concluding, so missing the possible connection between bleeding, gum bleeding, and low lo levels of vitamin C has the potential to have serious health consequences. So you see where the researcher is trying to, to elaborate on this particular issue it, without being direct. Basically, if the gums are bleeding, potentially due to suboptimal levels of vitamin C, a myriad of other health conditions may follow shortly. And instead of enduring the consequences of these tragic health conditions, what an incredible way just simply to basically add junk to the diet, a little bit of vitamin C, not a lot, just a little, enough to offset many of these tragic outcomes. Now, to give you an idea, I just brought this up just to give perspective. And this is the bonus round. As you can see from the nutritional information right here, try not to focus on the vitamin E. I know you, that's the first thing that's going to come to visual. 31% of the population, obviously, is deficient in inadequate levels of vitamin C. The results down below. About 21 million Americans have serious vitamin C deficiency. 66 may develop vitamin C deficiency depending on their health habits and disease status. And less than 30 million Americans, less than 30, so you have a population of 330 million people, consuming we're talking as a whole, one out of 11 is achieving optimal vitamin C dosaging. And then it goes into basically smokers and so on and so forth. Now keep that in mind, here you have a pandemic, here I digress. And is it the smoking which is leaving them susceptible or is it because smokers tend to have inadequate vitamin C levels that leaves them susceptible to infection or so on and so forth. And of course it gives other aspects that estrogen birth control, diabetics, pregnant women, and people taking aspirin and so on and so forth, which could result in vitamin C deficiency uh, or suboptimal levels of vitamin C in the blood, even if adequate vitamin C intake is there dietary. Uh, on a normal RDA basis. But again, incredible information, simple, eloquent, does not require a tremendous amount of effort in order to offset many of the potential outcomes into retinal bleeding, bleeding gums, so on and so forth, just to basically make certain, to some extent, that on average, you're getting at least 120 milligrams of vitamin C. I'm not even talking about the types of vitamins C, bioflavonoids, or polyphenols, or anything like that. Just a little bit extra boost can make a world of difference. And again, if you guys want to visit the data analytics section that we do Sunday morning, like 1 a.m. or Saturday night, uh, in reference to basic pandemic mitigation strategies, the effects, the data collection, this time we looked at vaccines and rise of mortality, for whatever reason, I don't know. But however, though, you, you start looking at the data and peel it away, we are there, and it's just fun to look at regardless, even if you're not really into Python programming or biostatistics. It just gives you a different perspective as opposed to the rah, rah, rah you see basically from a few talking mouths on TV. Again, to be respectful, though. Ralph signing off once again. Gratitude. Thank you. And if I don't see you on Saturday, I'll forward to you. I'll be here on Tuesday. Catch you all next time. See you then.